Hello everybody, so I thought it would be good to record this video for anybody interested on how to actually build apps with AI uh, or vibe coding in general. I get this question a lot, what should I do, what should I use? And so I thought it would be good to record a video of me recreating this app that I found on Twitter. Um, let's go here, about this taller app. And I saw um, this person post building a mobile app to fix yellow teeth. So I thought it was actually a really good idea because um, you know, it is an everyday problem people have and I haven't really found any competitors if there are they haven't really marketed it well And so the three main points of, of it being to scan your teeth uh, give you a routine and offer you some suggestions and also some uh, Some actual information of showing what the popularity is around 300,000 people now uh, out of the searches We can just break that down if we had 300,000 people and um, just convert that at a 0.01% uh, it's around 3,000 people who actually download the app. If we said those com converting customers, you know, 3,000 people uh, at a 9.99, that would be almost $30,000 uh, if you just converted 0.1% of that audience. And so actually, I'm going to be building this app out for you guys uh, just to show you the overall flow of things again. And so, yeah, <clears throat> if you don't know anything about frameworks, what I'm going to be using is something called Flutter. And Flutter is pretty much just a abstract version of Swift. It allows cross-platform development so that you can build Android apps and Apple apps at the same time. Typically, if you were to use a platform simply just like Swift, you can only build iOS apps. And so uh, just to keep this in mind, if you don't know what Flutter is, that is a high-level explanation of what it is. It's just a development tool to build apps. And so uh, let's go ahead and dive right into it. If you don't know how to download Flutter, simply go through this Get Started. Go to the um, Pick Your Platform. Again, you can only build iOS apps on Mac, but yeah, you just go here, pick your platform, and it walks you through actually how to install it. Uh, since I do already have it installed, I won't uh, just like go through everything. And yeah, uh, so you can just run this on your command line. But anyways, let's uh, let's start brand new. Um, let's go here. Let me go to my documents. CD dev. Uh, let's do teeth whitening app. So teeth teeth. Yeah. All right, well, let's actually run this with, what should we use, Codex or Claude Opus today? Let's go ahead with, um, let's go ahead with Claude first. Uh, a little bit of a tip also, um, let me look this on Claude, no speak permissions. I always run this uh, because it just runs without you having to ask. In the beginning of things, uh, what I typically like to do is actually use Opus. If I run into a scenario where I do need to or require something with higher level of thinking, I do use Codex GPT-5 high reasoning because it does perform better on those uh, heavily thinking tasks. So let's go here. Just waiting for this to run. Just to show you how simple it is, I might need to uh, click pause. Let me actually just minimize everything else just to clean things up. And I'll have this on this tab here. All right, so uh, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is I made a video covering this, but I essentially asked it, hold on, give me a moment. All right, let's go back here. So I pretty much went to, the first thing I do is go to ChatGPT and be like, build me a game plan for this app. And then I kind of just go through it and see if it is uh, something that we wanna do. Um, now for something like this, specifically, an app that requires uh, speed and timing, you know, before other people build it out, before other people try to market it. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. Uh, instead, I'm just going to be like, uh, for the AI recognition part, just use uh, open AI instead for analyzation and providing an AI game plan. So the reason being is I, they do mention something related to actually building something with uh, AWS for model hosting that's going to be a bit complicated and sure it will be good in the long term but for something that we want to spin up right away it is better just to use an api for any sort of uh vision so we're just going to wait for this to actually finish okay so this is one of the things i kind of teach in my course as well is not only prompting properly but also reprompting so that requires you to look over things and understand when to change things so you can see here that although we uh, had a game plan before when we integrated that open ai it changed everything completely so uh, another thing too is with Flutter, it is part of the Dart programming, langu programming language. And so here it's using React. Uh, now for the API side of things, you could use something like TypeScript or something like that. But 
uh, it does need to be a Flutter app, which is something I forgot to mention. It probably thinks it's going to be a React Native app, but that's okay because uh, here, everything here is laid out perfectly for us. It gives us like the JSON prompting uh, so that we understand the output of how to um, specifically, you know, when we capture that image, we make sure to be like, all right, I need you to, uh, on a scale of one to five, what is the severity of it? And then offer some suggestions on how to fix that. And then it offers a 30 day game plan as well from that JSON output. And I believe this is for the API responses to the Vision API of how to actually structure it properly. So you can even see here that it gives us a system prompt, which is important. And everything else that we needed is right here. So we can see here uh, in simple terms, how severity works, min whitening, uh, standard strips, or tobacco. Um, it involves a scanning. All right, so let's go ahead and just copy this whole thing and then paste it into our, um, our da -da -da -da, into our app. So for the model, the first thing I like to do is actually use plan mode. And initially with my prompt is going to be like, analyze this app I'm looking to build. It is a Flutter app, uh, so it needs to be modified for our use case. Please uh, build it out, or please plan, and then we will build it out using UI and UX. So go ahead and paste that there. And then I'm just gonna let it run. I'll be back with you guys. A little mid video plug before I show you the app and everything else. I'm creating a free course for everybody. My goal is to have as many people building apps with the most knowledge out there. And yeah, I'm, once I'm complete with the course, I hope to you know share everything along with you guys. But let's go back into the app. Um, and so we have it running now. We created a plan for us. Let's actually reload this app. So if you didn't know, uh, didn't know here, you can actually just open up uh, the. Da -da -da -da. We're gonna be like reload the app for me. Typically, you would have this on another terminal. And actually, what I'll do is um, let's uh, end this here. Enter space to close and the uh, Flutter run for us. And it's just let's run this in a different terminal. All right, so let's go ahead and do the command Flutter run, and just wait for it to build out the app. All right, so let me just, after one prompt again, uh, so there's gonna be a couple things that might be messed up. You know, the UI is like five out of 10, I would say. <laughs> uh, but these questionnaires are good. Um, and so, yeah, if we click start scanning, obviously on the simulator, it's not gonna use the actual camera. But if we click here, analyzing your teeth, this may take a few moments. All right, so we have an exception here. Uh, let's go ahead and fix this. Go ahead and copy this error, paste it into our Claude code, and then just fix that up real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and reload the app, and we can see here we have a demo in image. Again, it's because we're running on the simulator, but to understand the main point of it, uh, we do have this here. We can click get my 30-day plan. We got a different error, but it doesn't seem like on the UI side. It's okay. So uh, a couple things. This could be fixed on the UI, just you know, clean, cleaning it up. Uh, some things I see day one. Um, so this is kind of like a preview for your journey. And uh, now you have your plan of everything you should be doing different brush all right so a couple things that i notice on a, on a scale of to do's uh something that i like to do is i use this app called aqua voice uh, let me just show you guys and the reason why i use this over other voices is because i simply wanted to perform a brain dump of everything that i notice within the app some problems some ui fixes that that should be done and all i do is just talk and then literally like this demo right here can you modify this but i just go on a whole rant pretty much explaining things that i noticed what i didn't like what i liked and yeah, just letting it go off and build based off of everything I give it. So call this a brain dump. Make sure you try this yourself out and let me know if there's anything else. So I literally just went through the entire app right now and I just explained everything that I saw, what I didn't like and I liked, and I just like did a rant right here. And so it's going to take everything of what I said and then of course process and develop the app itself. All right, so back to the video. Only this is my second prompt, probably third uh, of some things. And let's just see the overall improvements. I'm seeing this for the first time with you guys. So what it did improve the colors. Uh, da, da, da. We can click start scanning and move on to the next part. Here, uh, I want to give you a little bit of background once I cover this section as well of how the backend will actually work. Click my game plan. Da, da, da. All right, so I mean, this is better. Uh, another bug that I noticed is that this doesn't switch for the underscore. If you click on products, weekly safety, but if you click on start my journey, you can see here that is much better. Um, boom, boom, boom. Now, this can be improved again. Uh, now, I did improve this with the swiping. Another thing, uh, issue right here we can fix. And so 
if I needed to, uh, this is kind of another thing too, is like pinpoint these type of issues. What you would do is uh, take a specific screenshot about let, let's say this part right here. And, um, and then my prompt would be, well actually, let's go ahead and copy this uh, to the clipboard and be like right here, analyze the issue UI wise and uh, fix it. So um, the reason why we're doing this is because we're relying them to answer and figure out why it doesn't look good. Because if you just tell them it doesn't look good, uh, they're not gonna really, uh, the, the model's not gonna really understand. But if you see here, um, it, old style instead of the new underlying style, uh, no, the issue is with the spacing on that background blue part. It has spacing on top, but not on the left and right. So you gotta be specific about these UI changes so that it can, it can actually fix it. All right, but uh, yeah, if I were to just go on and on and on, this is why you know I probably built this app out in less than an hour. But if you spent you know time to this six eight hours a day, right? If you were really going to take this seriously on a development level, um, you can of course you know build everything out. All right, so uh, how to actually build out the back end? Uh, let me first explain a couple things for you. So uh, if I go here, just do an infographic about the back end, back end real quick. So um, when let's let's actually reload the app. So I'm gonna take a screenshot of this specific part right here. Uh, whenever we do, uh, copy that. Whenever we click start scan, how the flow is going to work and how it should work for you if you're going to do something similar. And it's important to know this because if it carries on with other apps as well. When we click scan, let me go ahead and copy this as well. Uh, the, th the reason why I mentioned OpenAI on the actual scanning part is if I were to go to ChatGPT, I mean, let's just go on yellow teeth. Let me just copy this and copy image, and then let's head to ChatGPT, uh, and then be like, provide me a 30-day uh, teeth whitening plan to fix these teeth. So we click here and just wait a little bit. You can see here that it does provide you a game plan, and that is the logic behind the app and how the backend would actually work. I, I know I mentioned it earlier in the video, so hopefully this gives you a more in-depth explanation of how to actually work. So if you were to, again, go to your chat, be like, here's some teeth, how do I fix it, right? Well, how do we actually apply this to the app? How do we actually make it into a monetizable um, app that we could sell? Well, let's, uh, this is how you do it. Everything that I've showed you in the app is a explanation or representation of the input, which is our teeth, right? Our solution is solving that problem and without having people just to go and chat GPT and be like, oh, this is textual, right? With a SaaS, with a vertical SaaS, that's important, this is not horizontal, but with a vertical SaaS, we are simply solving the problem of ease by providing people a solution of a simple input, which is their teeth, the solution is whitening, all right? So how do we apply this to the app? Well, we can be like, turn this into JSON. And essentially, this is how the app works. It grabs that image and it uses prompting, which I've showed you earlier in the video, and it turns that into JSON. And this output is what we use whenever we go continue, we capture an image, and when it does the analyzation, it is grabbing the JSON and representing that on the app. So you can see here a detailed, detailed analysis. Of course, this is mock data, but when we use it against OpenAI, it's going to be using you know these things like week one, week two, we got a floss, brush two minutes, apply strips for 30 minutes, rinse, wash only, but when you click your 30 day plan, that's where it grabs all the information from that JSON. So that is in simple terms of how the API would work with this AI integration. Uh, the app taller does this exact same thing. And so it doesn't make sense, or it makes perfect sense why uh, you could apply that same uh, strategy into another niche. And with that marketing plan, get users. I would say if you were to build this type of app with the proper marketing in place, you could get around 3000 paying user, users within uh, at a no, I would say at a minimum 200 users within two weeks uh, to stay on the safe side if you were not to go viral. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, as a bonus, I want to cover a couple things of how to actually promote this app and a couple of tips that I share within my AI community as well. So if I were to go here, uh, look at the taller app, analyze their top trending videos. So you can see here that this video is with 100,000 views, 60,000 views, and these are all posture. organic you videos. And so um, what you need to do is literally just copy every single video that they have here or just the top 10 trending videos and just make it towards dentistry, uh, towards teeth whitening. And uh, I even made a Twitter guide on how to do this yourself. Let me go back here. So uh, steal the, st uh, day one to three, steal the playbook. So look at the top 10 videos. You can either, uh, here's an example of you know, uh, two reasons why uh, high growth stop and then why your teeth are yellow. And so that video, if that video popped off, you know, 
uh, it would funnel into your app. So another thing is if you don't want to actually post videos yourself to actually uh, funnel this into your own app, you could just hire people through UGC creators and you can use a platform called SideShift where you essentially pay people to post videos for you. And something that I preach and show in my course is that if you pay people, let's say $300 a month, that's not really where they, they make their money. Where they make their money is actually incentives. And so you can pay them based on views. And so let's say if you get, they get you a million views, they would get like a thousand bucks or something like that. And so that's a very important because not only are you putting money up, but you're also paying them based off performance basis. And so that is another way to blow up. Another uh, method three, I would say, is going to be with partnering with an influencer, which I did $65,000 in a fitness app in a very, very, very saturated niche, which is fitness. And so um, these are three methods that I used to actually blow up apps. And um, hopefully this helped you. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. But this is a um, video covering how to build a $50,000 app uh, in under an hour. And so if you have any questions, again, uh, feel free to message in the comments, but also join the AI Builders Club where I respond to everybody. That's all. Thank you guys. Uh, and I'll talk to you later.